I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of the saying, New Year, New Me. This mantra that we see and hear everywhere around this time of year makes me so anxious. It pushes the idea that I need to change or reinvent myself in the new year if I want to be successful. It is fueled by society telling me to want more than what I already have, to do more than what I've done in the past year, and to be more than what I currently am. At this time of year, it is so easy to fall into the trap that we owe ourselves and the world a new version of ourselves. There is no easing into change. We are pressured to believe that it must happen all at once if we want to be happy. It's not that I think resolutions and setting goals for the new year is a bad thing. I believe that these things can lead to personal growth, which is a positive and healthy thing. I just think that the way society pressures us into making immediate changes just because a new year has begun can actually do more harm than good. Change is a process that comes through genuine self-exploration. It doesn't have to happen just because we have stepped into a new year. We shouldn't feel the need to put pressure on ourselves to become a romanticized version of ourselves that we've never met. Maybe I feel particularly strong about all of this because I just can't ignore the fact that 2021 has brought on so many challenges for all of us. Yes, many good things did happen in 2021. Access to vaccines have allowed us to regain some sense of normalcy. After a year of practicing physical distancing, we can currently gather with the people we love and care about in the places that hold so much meaning for us. We have also been able to experience travel and concerts and sporting events. But my heart also hurts. It hurts because COVID is still affecting our world despite vaccines. It hurts because hundreds of people, some of whom we know and love, have lost their homes from the fires in Boulder County. It's difficult to step into this new year not feeling heartbroken. In the Gospel text today, King Herod receives word that Jesus, a new king, had been born in Bethlehem. Herod calls for the wise men who had observed the star of the child at its rising and sends them to Bethlehem to search for Jesus. Herod claims that he would like to pay homage to the new king, but we find out later in the chapter that what Herod really had in mind was to kill the child. We learn through the Gospels that Herod is a paranoid and ruthless tyrant. In the text today, he feels threatened by the birth of a new king. He is confronted with the reality that he lives in a world much larger than himself, a world where he is not in complete control. While Matthew focuses specifically on Herod's reaction to Jesus' birth, Herod is just one of many cruel and oppressive rulers in this context. Jesus is born into a world in desperate need of a leader who will change the narrative. When the wise men reach Bethlehem and see Jesus, they are overwhelmed with joy. They know that this child is fulfilling Micah's prophecy. They had met the one who is the ruler that will be a shepherd to the people. Throughout his gospel, Matthew reveals that Jesus is a ruler who stands in stark contrast to Herod and the other rulers of his day. Jesus, a king born in humble circumstances, comes not to take life, but to give it. He comes not to wield power over the people, but to live among them as a servant. In everything he does, he acts out of compassion and care. Yet as we know, life after Jesus' birth is not easy. Oppressive structures were a reality throughout his lifetime, and we know that they are a reality in our world today. As the wise men in the gospel text leave Bethlehem after the birth of Jesus, they take a different road to return to their country. They are warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They had to have been frightened by him. But I believe that after meeting Jesus, they were also transformed because they had met the king who would change the narrative about what it means to be a leader, to care for and live among one's people. Once they had met the Christ child, they experienced a new day, a new road, a new hope. 
Meeting Jesus certainly did not make the wise men's lives easier or more comfortable, but it provided them with a new way forward. And knowing Jesus provides us with a new way forward. If you have stepped into this new year feeling burdened by the weight of loss and devastation, or if you are overwhelmed by a society that puts so much pressure on you to change because it's a new year, you are not alone. As we learn from Matthew, change does not happen all at once. It is natural to feel anxious and overwhelmed and sad right now. Yet we will continue to move forward, being gentle with ourselves and doing our best to model the compassion and love that Jesus had for people. We will begin our travels on this new road, and we may not know what lies ahead. But because we know Jesus, we have hope for reconciliation and know that we can and will experience healing. Thanks be to God. Amen.